you know, as a lot of you know that watch my channel, I had a tough time choosing between the Yamaha MT-09, which is this bike, and the MT-07. I mean, I've been going back and forth on this for many years, and I finally pulled the trigger on a 2020 MT-09 that I bought brand new with zero miles. Um, and it was really tough, you know, because I wasn't really looking for a lot of power. I just wanted some a good sounding bike with some low end grunt to cruise on out here on the streets. I wasn't looking for a real crazy hooligan bike, you know, like I had with my Priya Tuono uh, and, you know, CBR 1000 double R. And like I do with my YZ450FX Supermoto, which is just the ultimate hooligan motorcycle to you know, rip it and do wheelies. I, I love it. That thing is, it's awesome. Amazing. Um, I just wanted a, like a power cruiser, you know, for cheap. And uh, the MT-07 versus MT-09. Uh, but I'm going to tell you exactly why I purchased the MT-09 and why I'm glad I got the MT-09 over the MT-07. Stay tuned. Let's go for a ride. Hey, hey. watching cycle cruises all on one motorcycle channel subscribe today make sure to visit cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab my videos and those are a bunch of playlists with all my videos categorized in them to make it easier for you to navigate through first off as far as looks i think the mt09 looks better especially the 2017 and newer looks better than the mt07 mt07 is a pretty good looking bike don't get me wrong but I just think this looks a little better, you know, especially I'm a six foot tall rider, you know, six foot one. So this bike fits me better. That was one of the main reasons is that I feel really comfortable on this bike. I don't have a lot of knee bend like I do on the MT-07. So if you're a taller rider, you're probably going to want to get the MT-09 versus the MT-07. But still, you'll probably be fine. I hear a lot of guys that are 6'1 six, six or even 6'2 that ride the Intel 7, and they say it's fine. So, But you'll look kind of weird, which I don't care what people think. But some of you guys are very, very sensitive on what people think about you. <laughs> and you'll probably look kind of dorky being real tall on that little Intel 7. But who cares? It doesn't matter, guys. Like I said, I didn't get it. I didn't get. I could care less about people's perception of me on the bike. You see, you see, guys. I'm wearing my high vis airbag vest, which I highly recommend to help keep you safe out there. Link in the description and comment section of this video. But I'm not looking the coolest out here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I just I want to stay safe so I can ride another day. Uh, and also, this bike has LED headlights. I like the the headlight on this. Some of you guys don't like it, but I think it looks really cool. Um, but anyways, I'm going to tell you some more about why I chose this bike over the MT-07. But I'm going to get on the bike and, and demonstrate and show you why this bike is so awesome over the MT-07. But first off, for those of you guys who want to get this ultra lightweight helmet with auto tint shield and this motor vlog camera, my CE armor jacket that flows a ton of air, keeping me nice and cool on this hot day, uh, pants, boots, all my these awesome shorty gloves. I have links to all my gear in the description and comment section of my videos. First off, triple cylinder versus a twin cylinder. This is my very first time, you know, since I've gotten this bike, this is the very first bike that I've had uh, that has a triple cylinder engine. I never even rode a triple cylinder engine before I got this bike, guys. And the power delivery is kind of different compared to the twin and the inline four and the V4 even. Um, and the single, of course, it's it's different. It's weird. This, this bike, I haven't ridden any other triple cylinder bikes, but I usually prefer the twin. I like the twin, man, or the single. Now, V4 is cool in inline 4 Don't get me wrong. The bikes that I've had were absolutely amazing. Um, just to give you reference, I owned a... I started off with a Chinese scooter. Then I got a CBR 250R. CBR 600 double R. CBR 1000 double R. Uh, Ducati XD Avell, which had an L-twin engine. Uh, a Prelia Tuono V4 1100 factory, which... Uh, that had a V4 engine in it 
and of course my YZ450 FX that has a single cylinder engine but this bike ooh, it hit oh boy <laughs> it is pretty hard off the line man I don't know I feel like my Tuano and the XDL maybe hit a little harder maybe just a little bit uh, but this bike hits pretty hard I don't know you know the MTL7 they say he's got some good low down grunt but it's not nothing like this this bike modded can run 10.5 in a quarter mile stock it runs 10.98 I think the MTL7 I think it's it's like a 12 second bike in a quarter mile so this bike has got power and grunt everywhere over the MTL7 and like I said it fits me better being six foot tall that was like the main reason I, you know, I'm not really, you know, the power, this thing is kind of overkill even for the streets and get you into trouble, but it's not too bad. Woo! Right off the bottom, that's what you want. And this bike is opening up now. It's, you know, it's not broken in fully. It only has, what, 45 miles now. I started off with zero miles. So. Woo! Woo! It's got that grunt, baby. I tell you, for those of you that are considering a Harley, you may want to get this bike instead, man, because it's got the upright seating position. It's comfortable. You know, seat's comfortable. And uh, it's got a lot of grunt. Kind of like, you know, the Harley's got that, they're known for that grunt. And uh, so I would definitely, that's, like I said, I got this as my power cruiser. But, yeah, another reason why I didn't get the MTL 7 is uh, it's a bit budget. It's got the suspension is a little better on this MTL 9, which is still not the greatest in my opinion. The front fork is, is okay. It's pretty decent, but the rear shock is kind of bouncy here, guys. I, I'm probably going to switch the rear shock out, but the MTL 7, you got to replace the fork and the shock. So for only like a thousand to two thousand more for the MTL 9, you're better off. Now for those of you that are just starting out, I, I probably wouldn't recommend this bike because it it's pretty aggressive, especially in mode A. Um, let me let me cut the traction control off too here, so we can get the full proper power. Let me let me cut this traction control off. There, I got it off, and we got the full power here. <laughs> this thing hits pretty hard, boy. Woo! It's like truck like torque, like diesel truck torque. It's pretty legit, but this this front wheel moves like that, man. I don't like that. I'm gonna have to get a steering uh dampener. Uh, uh definitely pick me up uh probably an Olin steering stabilizer. Yeah, I'm not being only see me busting the wheelies on this for a while until I get that stabilizer, man, because I don't want any tank slappers, guys. I don't want to have a real effed up D. <laughs> I don't like the delay in the throttle, I'll tell you guys. Um, I think the MTL7 may have a, I think it may have a, a cable throttle. I don't know for sure. Um, but this has a ride-by-wire throttle that I don't like. But maybe once I tune it, you know, with the fuel controller, and then I put the aftermarket exhaust and open it up, uh, maybe it'll be better, but it's like an on-off throttle. It's weird. You know, my Ducati X, the former Ducati X Diavel and the Priya Tuano both had ride-by-wire throttles, but this is, the X Diavels was right on point, man. That was pretty good. The uh, Tuano, I didn't really like it that much, but it was okay. It's better than this, though. This is the worst by far ride-by-wire throttle. I don't like it, but like I said, we'll make some changes and mod it, and we'll see. This thing is really comfortable though, man. You, uh, you know, as far as a new rider, you'll probably, if you put it in B mode, it does reduce the power by 10 horsepower. And you may be okay. It's still a bit aggressive, even in B mode for a new rider. So I would highly recommend you probably go with the MTL7 over the MTL9 if you are a new rider, for sure. And even the MTL7 may be a bit too much for a new rider. I don't know. Um... I highly recommend that you take the MSF class because they'll have bikes for you. And if you go through the full training, then you and you pass and you you feel comfortable, you should be able to ride an MTL7 just fine. Um, 
but yeah so I'm really glad that I got this over the MT-07 like I said this really comes down to just being a better fit and having the better fork but it, man this thing is really wild over bumps though I haven't tuned it for my weight so it pr it's probably only fair that I tune the, 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 the fork and shock a bit for my weight and we'll see how it is but I'm, I feel like I'm gonna have to replace that rear shock though because it's it's definitely budget yeah baby we need to put some sounds it's too quiet man but you can't go wrong with either bike guys they're both legit bikes man they're both you can't beat it for the price Yamaha knocked it out of the park for the price I mean come on I paid nine thousand dollars out the door for this bike brand spanking new 2020 you know 900 cc triple cylinder engine amazing man truck like torque I'm telling you man you can't beat it and with Yamaha you got reliability parts are cheaper um, thumbs up man I'm glad I got this bike guys just chill like I said I just want to nice and comfortable just taking the scenery I got power on tap if I need it I'm comfortable I feel like I can throw some bags on this and I can just head out on the highway it now on the highway it, it's not the greatest it doesn't have crazy passing power um, like that Tuano and you know even the XDI Vail had better passing power but um, you have to throw it in like fourth gear to really rev you know crank on it and, and get that to have some proper passing power but it's still not as legit as the, the Tuano not even close but that's a super bike you know this is a middleweight bike and uh, and no heat on this bike by the way unlike the super bikes and uh, super naked some of the super naked so I, I left the turn signal on I know I'm terrible but yeah guys this bike is legit uh, all black is beautiful I can't beat it man that's gorgeous I love it it looks really aggressive looks awesome comfortable <sighs> great torque for the street beautiful I, thumbs up thumbs up I like it like I say go check out my review if you haven't seen it but don't forget to subscribe to my all of my motorcycle channel and check out my other channel bug out moto deuces thumbs up check out my playlist for new riders and popular videos don't forget to comment and subscribe and check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto, where I customize a van for my motorcycle so I can live in my van with my motorcycle and travel across the country anywhere. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Bug Out Moto.